Hello, my awesome pre-calculus honors. Um, all right, so on this video, we are going to do 4.5, okay? Keep in mind, we have 4.5 and we have 4.6, and that is the end of chapter four. So you know chapter four test is coming, so make sure we start, um, make sure you need to attend tutorial if there's something from the last um, few homework assignments that has not been very clear to you, okay? So, here we go. The graph of a rational function. On this unit, we're going to put all of the information that we have studied in the last four sections together and have a bigger picture, a complete picture of what a rational function is supposed to be like. All right, so I'm gonna flip over and um, I'm gonna take this page out. The reason is that I need to see these steps right here, okay, to do um, the problems because um, you don't have to memorize these steps, okay? I will ha I will provide these steps for you. So, oops, what happens? Give me a second to, okay. Um, so, but in our notes, we're gonna write down quickly what each one is supposed to be. So use steps one to seven from our notes to analyze the graph. In your homework, it will tell you where to go. They may have eight steps, they may have seven. It doesn't really matter. If you understand the concept, they're all very similar, okay? So r of x equals x squared plus three x plus two, all of it divided by x. Step number one. Okay, it says factor the numerator and denominator and find the domain of the rational function. So we're gonna quickly s write down words that will help us um, remember later what to do. Factor, and then find domain. Find domain, okay? So that's really what step number one is. So let's try to factor it out. R of x equals, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to try to factor out your numerator. Hopefully you have x plus two times x plus one, and then the denominator, you can't really factor that because it's just a monomial. So it says factor numerator, factor denominator, and then it says find the domain. The domain is where your denominator cannot be zero. So I need to exclude x can never ever be zero. Or you can write interval notation, negative infinity to zero, union that with zero to positive infinity. So either one will be just fine. I'm gonna box these up because these are my final answers, okay? So, those are them on step one. I'm probably gonna use the entire page. We might have to move B and C and D on the next page or on a completely blank piece of paper. So here we go, step two. Step two, write the function R in the lowest terms. I mean, hey, is it reducible? So step two, lowest, terms, okay? Since this one is not reducible, I'm just going to write itself. Okay, if it's not reducible, that is the lowest term, right? What is the lowest term of one half? It's just one half. That's not reducible anymore after that. Since this is not reducible, we're gonna keep it the way it is, okay? All right, we're gonna move up a little bit. Okie dokie. Step three. Step three, locate the intercepts of the graph. That means x and y intercept, okay? So let's do x intercept first. X intercept is when y equals to zero. So what we're gonna do is gonna set r of x equals to zero. So zero equals x squared plus three x plus two all over x. So let's think about this. We talk about this a little bit in class. To find the x intercept, okay, I would have to set y equals to zero. So now I need to get rid of this denominator. That means I'm gonna multiply this side by x over one, multiply this side by x over one. So this side, these two x values will reduce or cancel each other out. But what happens when I take anything and multiply by zero? This side over here, I still have a zero. Would you agree? Well, what's the only thing that's left on the right side? Do you agree that just the Numerator, so x-intercept is exactly the same as taking the numerator and setting it equal to zero, okay? Again, 
x-intercept is the same as taking the numerator and setting, and setting it equal to zero. The denominator creates asymptotes, okay, or holes. So we don't need to worry about the denominator if we're looking for x-intercept, okay. And we already factored that, so let's write that again. x plus 2. I could have used this step right here, but I forgot, so. And you can use either one. So x-intercepts are at negative 2 and negative 1. I'm going to write my final answer up here. So negative 2 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Because it did just say intercepts, we're going to look for both x and y. Since I'm out of space, I'm just going to write y int right here, and I'm going to um, leave it some space, okay? Y intercept is when x is completely 0. So if you look at this, if that's 0, that's 0. Well, can I have a 0 in the denominator? Can I have a 0 in the denominator? No, that's not possible, okay? Since, since x can not be 0, there is no y-intercept. Hey, come on in! So we're going to say none. All right, I'm going to hit pause because I need my computer fix.